Hey, you. I heard you were still spinning up your EC2 instances using the console. In this video, I'm gonna show you a better way to do it using the AWS CDK. Hi, if you're new around here, my name is Ryan. I'm an AWS certified solutions architect and developer. And my goal is to teach you modern serverless system design using AWS. Let's get it. All right, jumping into the code here, I've created a new folder. We're just gonna go ahead and jump into that folder. We're gonna init the project, CDK init app dash L TypeScript. We'll wait for that to initialize. All right, we'll jump into our stack. We'll clean up everything that we don't need here and import stack and stack props. All right, we'll remove that there. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna import a few things from the EC2 library. Instance, instance type, instance class, instance size, machine image, and VPC. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is just reference our default VPC. Every AWS account comes with a default VPC. We can just reference it here rather than creating a whole new one. We'll just do VPC dot from lookup. From lookup is gonna take in a couple different arguments. This for the context, the logical resource name, which we'll just call my default VPC, and the VPC lookup options, which we will just set is default, to true. We don't need anything else here. When it deploys, this will just create a dynamic reference to your default VPC. Next, we'll create the instance, call it instance equals new instance. That's going to take in this for the context, the logical resource name, and the instance properties. The first of which is VPC. We can just reference our VPC. After VPC, we'll declare the machine image, which will reference the machine image object and call the static method, latest Amazon Linux 2023. And finally, we'll reference instance type, which will just reference the instance type object with the static of method and we'll pass in the t3 instance class and the instance size of micro this will allow our instance to stay within the free tier so it doesn't actually charge us any money but i will mention a couple other properties we can put here in the instance properties the first of which being the security group we can include our own security group but by default ec2 will just create a new one when it creates this instance next is associate public ip address this would assign a public facing ip address to your ec2 instance and would allow you to access it this is great if you were hosting a website on your ec2 instance. User data is just a custom shell script that would run every single time your instance booted up. So this would be perfect if you needed to install some packages on your instance as soon as it started. All right, so this looks good to me. We can go ahead and deploy this now. I'm going to use the optional profile flag so that it deploys it into the correct AWS account. We'll give that a few minutes to deploy. All right, so we did actually have an error with that first deployment. What we actually needed to do is go in here and explicitly declare our account number and the region that we want to deploy into, mainly because the VPC look up is trying to find the default VPC and there's a default VPC in every single region. So we have to explicitly mention the region when we go to create the stack that we're deploying. So we'll give this a couple minutes to deploy. All right. So that took about three minutes, but we can go into the console now and we can see what was created. All right. So now that we're in the CloudFormation console, we can see that our EC2 deployment stack was created. We can look here in the resources and we can see a bunch of different things that were created on our behalf by the CDK. This is why the CDK is so powerful because we didn't actually need to create any of these things custom ourselves. They all got created by default. So you can see we have our security group, our instance role, and the actual instance, plus the instance profile itself. We can actually go here into our instances and we can refresh this. And we can see that our EC2 instance was created. And we can see that our status checks are initializing here. So we'll just give that another couple minutes. While it's finishing, we can actually notice something different. And I did not know this, but apparently it actually does create a public IPv4 address by default, even if you don't set that on the instance. So that is good to remember when you're creating this. We can also go down here and we can see that it's Amazon Linux. We can actually check out this AMI and we can see that it's the Amazon Linux 2023 AMI. We can also see that we have a T3 micro instance type that was created. This is within the free tier, so it shouldn't cost you any money. All right, so now we can tear everything down. We can CDK destroy with our profile flag here. You do need the profile flag on the destroy because otherwise, if you don't use it, then the CDK CLI will not assume the correct credentials to be able to destroy the CloudFormation stack. Give this a few minutes to finish deleting everything. EC2 does take a few minutes to both create and destroy the instances. So this might take two or three minutes. All right, we can go here back into the console. We can look at our instances and we can see that our new instance that was created is terminated. And in our CloudFormation stack, we can see that CloudFormation stack that we created was deleted. That wraps up this video. If you guys like this, please don't forget to like the video. And please don't forget to let me know down in the comments if there's any other videos that you want to see me make on this channel. Thank you for watching.